Hello kindergarten, this is Mrs. Shivani from the Syracuse Academy of Science and Citizenship. How are you guys today? All right, well, I have a very special math lesson for you guys today. We are going to work on counting um, groups of objects and then choosing how many there are. So, should be a pretty quick lesson today and I think we will have some fun. If you have something to write on and something to write with, that would be great today. We are going to practice writing the numbers one, two, and three. And some of those are pretty tricky, especially the number two, it can be kind of tricky. So we're gonna work on writing those three numbers and then um, we will do a fun exit ticket. So we'll start with our fluency warm up. We'll do our application problem, our concept development, which is really fast. And we'll talk about what we learned. And then I will show you your exit ticket for the day. Sound good? All right, let me share my screen and let's get started. You guys are getting so good with numbers. I'm so, so proud of you. All right, here we go. Module one, lesson 13. Less, module number one has a lot of lessons. It is the longest module of the year. And so we're about halfway through now, almost halfway through. Not quite, but we're flying through these lessons. That's because you guys are doing so great. So our goal for the day, we will order, we will order and write numbers zero, like we learned about yesterday, to three to answer how many questions. This is something my son is working on now too. All right, let's practice counting with these fun beads. I love these in the classroom. As the number gets bigger, slowly raise your hands. And as the number gets smaller, lower your hands, okay? You ready? Count with me. One, two, three, Four, five, I hope you're raising your hands. Now lower them. Five, four, three, two, one, and zero. We can't forget zero, right? Good work. All right, we're gonna jump right to our application problem now. And uh, this is a good one because I love cookies. Cookies are my favorite favorite kind of dessert to eat. I absolutely love all kinds of cookies. So let's pretend like I had some cookies and I gave, I had two cookies in my lunchbox. Here are my two cookies. Oh man, that looks like such a tasty part of my lunch. I gave one to one of my friends and I gave one to myself. How many cookies do I have left now? Zero, you got it, I have zero. At least I shared and I had one yummy in my tummy. <laughs> I have zero cookies now, that's how many. Okay, so let's see. Look around the room you're in right now. What do you have exactly one of? Hmm, I'm gonna look around right here. I'm in my guest room right now, which has my office in it. And, hmm, ooh, I have exactly one phone. Just one. What do you have exactly one of? Maybe you're in your kitchen and you have one fridge, or maybe you're in your living room and you have one couch. Wow. What do we have exactly two of on our bodies? Hmm, I have two arms. I have two ears, I have two eyes, I have two eyebrows, I have two legs, I have two feet, I have two hands, we have two of a lot of things, huh? I have two cheeks, <laughs> I have two nostrils, but you have exactly two of. <laughs> well, how about this one? We have exactly how many crayons below? Three. Three. <laughs> One, two, three. Three crayons. Silly Mrs. Giovanni. That's two, right? Sometimes it's hard for me to show you something and on my fingers at the same time. Did that ever get hard for you guys? <laughs> but we have three crayons below. Okay, now here is where if you have something to write with, that would be great because we're going to work on writing the numbers one, two, and three. 
So if you don't have something to write with and on, that's fine. You can just write in the air. You can always write in the air with your pointer finger, pointer finger, where are you? You can write with that one, okay? So let's practice writing the number one. Make it with your finger in the air or make it on something that you're using to write on and write with. Okay, here we go. Let me grab my pen. I'm gonna use blue. Tap to bottom, then you're done. You just wrote the number one. And if you wanna start, you can start right here with that dot, or sometimes I just like to put a dot right here and go top to bottom, then you're done. You just wrote the number one. Top to bottom, then you're done. You just wrote the number one. And it kind of looks like a lowercase L, huh? Yeah, it really does. Show me your ones. Good, one more time. Top to bottom, then you're done. You just wrote the number one. And sometimes I have kiddos in my classroom who like to write fancy ones like this. That is totally fine with me if you want to write a fancy one like this. You just have to make sure this little diagonal line is facing the right way. So if you like to write fancy ones like that, that's cool. Or you can just do top to bottom, then you're done. You just wrote the number one. Either one is fine with me. All right, let's work on the next one, which is the number two. Oops. We can't skip two. Okay, now, this number can be really tricky because it's made up of curvy lines and a straight line. And I feel like anything that has both kinds of lines in it can be kind of hard. So let's, just, let's give this one our best effort. This is the number two. So make it with me in the air. Half a moon, there's more to do. Side to the right, that's a two. Half a moon, there's more to do. Side to the right, that's a two. Okay, let's write it right here. Half a moon, there's more to do. Slide to the right, that's a two. Half a moon, there's more to do. Side to the right, that's a two. Let's do it two more times. Half a moon, there's more to do. Side to the right, that's a two. One more time. Half a moon, there's more to do. Side to the right, that's a two. Good work. All right, let's work on the number three. Okay, now this is one of my favorite number poems and I like to write this one a lot. This one can be tricky to write backwards though. So make sure that you're starting at the right spot. I'm gonna do it right over here. Okay, and this is how I say this number poem. It's one of my favorites. Around the tree, around the tree, that's how you make a number three. Do it in the air with me. Around the tree, around the tree, that's how you make a number three. Now let's write it. Around the tree, around the tree, that's how you make a number three. Around the tree, around the tree, that's how you make the number three. Around a tree, around a tree, that's how you make the number three. Good work, did you guys like that one? My kiddos always love that one. Okay, now, help me with this problem and then I'll show you your exit ticket, okay? Well then we'll talk about what we learned and then we'll do our exit ticket. Um, let's write the missing numbers. Sometimes these numbers count up, sometimes they count down, and sometimes they just start in the middle. So what are we missing here? Blurt it out. One, two, blurt, three. Now let's go down the column. When I'm filling out a piece of paper, I always choose which way I wanna go. You might choose to go across the rows and then go back, or you can choose to go down a column. I'm gonna go down this column first and then back up and go down this column, okay? So we have one, two, three. Now blurt with me, where are we missing? One, two, three. Good, now let's do this one. Zero, one, blurt, two. Zero, one, two, good. Hmm. One, two, what goes here? Zero, good. Okay, now let's go back up to the top. Three, two, 
one, three, two, one. Hmm. Blank, two, one. Three, two, one. Two, one, zero. That was counting down. Two, one, zero. Good. That was fun to fill in those gaps there. All right. So, what do you need to do to find out how many? If somebody says, how many siblings do you have? What do you do? You count, right? So you know that the question, how many, means a number. How many is always going to mean a number. How many cars do you have? How many books do you have? How many lollipops do you have? It's a number, always going to be a number. And what are some ways that you can tell or show how many? You can tell people a number. You can draw people how many you have of something. You can show them how to count. Um, lots of ways. You can write the number, right? Just like we did. You could write. If you have two cars, you could write the number two and show them that you have two. Or you could just say the number two. Okay. So now let me show you your exit ticket for the day. I think you will enjoy it. So this one's about some pets. So what you're going to do is look at this image right here. There's some dogs, there's some turtles, and there's some fish. So it's kind of like they're at a pet store. And I want you to look up here. How many turtles are in this image at the top? And then you'll choose. How many dogs are in this image? And then you'll choose. How many fish are in this image? And then you'll choose. And then here you'll fill in the missing number just like we just did together. Wow, great job today. We counted how many, we wrote the numbers one, two, and three. Wow, you did some good work. Keep on practicing writing your numbers. Please keep writing the number zero and one and two and three. When you guys get back to school, I want to be sure that you know how to write those numbers. It's very important. So make sure you're practicing, practicing, practicing. You can write them in sand. You can write numbers um, in chalk outside. You can write numbers maybe if you have like bath crayons. You could write them in the bath. You can write numbers anywhere you want with whatever you want as long as your parents say it's okay, right? Make sure they say it's okay. I don't want you wrecking anything in your home. <laughs> so practice writing those numbers and I will see you back for our next math lesson next time. Bye guys.